Hey, the Steam Deck is the most exciting piece of gaming hardware for a long, long time. But a lot of people think it could fail because of Valve's results with hardware. So is the Steam Deck worth it? 100% yes. I luckily pre-ordered my $399 entry-level copy and I'm so excited as a former console gamer. Stick around in this video and I'll explain exactly why the Steam Deck is worth it. My name's a gaming man, we're gamers. Let's all get along. The entry 399 price range for the 64 gigabyte model is a super bargain with the option of paying 592 for 256 gigabytes or 649 for 512 gigabytes and both of the previous models have faster MVE storage. Gabe Newell, Valve CEO, described pricing the Steam Deck as painful. Valve are losing money with every Steam Deck, especially the entry 399 version. I did a quick comparison of how much it will cost to build an equivalent gaming PC with the Steam Deck's spec during the 2021 chip shortage. We have to be careful because there's no direct comparison with the APU found in the Steam Deck that you can buy in a gaming PC. So this is using current Amazon eBay prices for each individual component. This is $837 in total. Crazy. I know the CPU and GPU are usually a lot cheaper but you have to compare what the Steam Deck will cost to build right now during this chip shortage. Remember this is without all the necessary PC gaming peripherals such as the mouse, such as the keyboard, such as the monitor, making the true equivalent price of a Steam Deck easily be more than $1,000. If you have the necessary peripherals, then the Steam Deck can be used as a gaming PC and docked either using the official unreleased Steam Deck or any old USB hub, such as this Anchor USB hub that you can buy for $22. It supports free USB peripherals, HDMI 2.0, Ethernet and displays up to 8K 60fps and 4K 60fps. This is impressive for handheld. Contrast that to Nintendo Switch when docked only supports 1080p up to 60fps. The best value Steam Deck is probably the mid-range one at $512 because you're getting the MVE storage at 256GB. But you can spend $27 on a 170 megabits a second micro SD with 128 gigabytes or $164 on a 300 megabyte 128 gigabyte SD to improve on the 64 gigabyte entry level memory. We won't know how the speeds differ depending on the card and whether or not it's worth it to spend the extra $130 to get the 300 megabyte second write speed. I pre-ordered the $399 version and I'm going to do a lot of tests involving different SD cards and whether or not it's worth it to purchase the more expensive one. So make sure you subscribe to be the first to know. So the Steam Deck is the most powerful video game console ever made. So in Gabe's IGN interview that you can see linked in the description down below, Gabe and his team were having inter talks between each other wondering what can they do to add something to the PC gaming community. Many gamers, including those at Valve, thought that mobile gaming was not at the level that it should be. Just look at the new 2021 OLED Switch having the Tegra X1 Mar Marioko processor way back in 2015. There's a 2021 machine having a 2015 processor. It's not good enough. If you're interested in a direct comparison between the OLED Switch and the Steam Deck, I recommend you watch my video. The Steam Deck's GPU is capable of 1.6 teraflops, which puts it in the bull mark of roughly the Xbox One and PS4 of last generation. But remember, because it's made of newer architecture, it's a lot more future-proof and more powerful than the PlayStation 4 Xbox One. Its power is somewhere between the PlayStation 4 and the Xbox Series S, which is stupid impressive for a handheld. Having the ability to play AAA games like Red Dead Redemption 2 and GTA 5 on the toilet is a thing to behold. The Steam Deck power and open source nature makes it the best emulating device ever made. It can even emulate PlayStation 3 and maybe even Nintendo Switch. If you're finding value in this video please like because it helps to spread to more people. So it's the best emulation device. Using SteamOS you have native RetroArch which includes Netplay. So imagine playing all these old classics like Mario Kart or Street Fighter on the go online. Batocera is a Linux open source retro gaming distribution that can be booted to a SD to emulate numerous consoles. Please look in the description to learn the consoles. Its power makes PlayStation 3 emulation and even Nintendo Switch emulation possible with Yuzu emulator which is only going to improve over time. You can have various different SD cards, one with your AAA PC games and one with RetroArch games 
so you can immediately just plug it in the Steam Deck and play anything you want anytime. Due to its native touchscreen, emulation for the 3DS and DS will work no problem. Older systems such as the PSP and PS2 can be upscaled to 420 to make them look and play better than ever on the Steam Deck 720p screen. Steam Deck has an incredible video game library on day one. Contrast to newer generation consoles like the PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X, the Steam Deck will have access to 50,000 plus Steam Deck games on day one. PC gaming keys, especially on websites like CD Keys, check my review of the website there, are a lot cheaper than equivalent games on console. It's fantastic for indie developers as many games that wouldn't make it on the console will be available to everyone who has the Steam Deck. We've already seen this with the success of Switch ports of indie games such as Hollow Knight and Dead Cell. But with the Steam Deck, you're going to play PC prices, no premium Switch prices. Mike Rose, creator of indie developer No More Robots said, I've never wanted a piece of gaming hardware to succeed more than this. So the Steam Deck is well designed. Valve has learned from their past hardware efforts, such as the Steam Controller and Steam Machine, to create well-designed ergonomic products. The Steam Deck has two thumbsticks, true trackpads, XYBA buttons, two buttons on each side similar to an Xbox controller, with two custom paddles at the bottom similar to SCUF slash Xbox Elite controller. It has a trackpad under this equivalent stick on the Switch that supposedly creates a similar FPS experience to using a mouse, but we're only gonna know when we have it in our hand. Other PC gaming handhelds like the Aya Neo and GPD Win 3 suffered from bad ergonomics, which is essential to get right as a handheld device. As we see in the trailers, the Steam Deck has a lot more grip and chunkiness to it. I think this is gonna make it far more comfortable to use the Nintendo Switch, despite it weighing 1.47 pounds, which is double the weight of the Nintendo Switch. The problem I find with the Switch is because of how narrow it is, if you've got big hands like me, it's very uncomfortable to play for hours if you don't have a dedicated grip like the Satisfy Comfort grip. Whereas the Steam Deck is gonna be about that chunky, which obviously is gonna add a lot of weight to the device, but it's gonna be a lot more comfortable to grip for longer playing sessions. So I'm extremely excited about the Steam Deck and I'm not alone as a console game. I hope you understood whether or not the Steam Deck is worth it. And if you need more convincing, please watch my video on the nine reasons why the Steam Deck is guaranteed to succeed. We're gamers here, let's all get along. And if you want to help a gamer out, please subscribe to help me reach my goal of a thousand subscribers by next month. Thank you so much. Goodbye.